How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Salamander Wilds. And this is the Blue-Tailed Firebelly Newt Care Guide, also known as the Cyan Newt. In this care guide, I will break down the necessary requirements to properly care for this species that will lead to a long and happy life for your newt. I will go over what exactly this newt is, including some life history details, some information on where it actually comes from, in order to tie that into how this species should be kept. And so with that, if you enjoy the video and you find this care guide helpful, please remember to leave a like, share, comment down below, and please subscribe. Let's get into this. The blue tail Firebelly Newt, or also known as the Cyan Newt, along with its scientific name Cynops cyanurus, is part of the family Salamandridae under the genus Cynops. And there are two main takeaways from this. The word cyan is emphasized due to the blue flash of color that mature males get during their breeding season. It is also important to note that this animal is under the family Salamandridae, and all members of this family contain toxins. The cyan newt is poisonous, and as such, it possesses nature's bright, vivid warning colors under its belly, that noticeable fire belly. This species also starts as an aquatic guild larva after hatching from an egg, and then eventually it'll undergo metamorphosis changing into the highly aquatic adult that is the focus of this care guide. And unlike other newts, this species preferred temperatures just a little warmer than usual. And so we'll need to consider all these key points of information about the species to properly care for it. And so with all of this in mind, we could jump into the next section, housing. And be sure to check the description below for the links to the references and sources shown. First, we'll need to pick out an enclosure for the blue tail firebelly newt. An aquarium with an escape proof lid is highly recommended. You can comfortably house three to maybe four individuals, depending on their size, in a 10 gallon aquarium. But anything more than that, you'll definitely have to get a bigger setup. Once you've chosen your enclosure, you'll need to consider a few other items to create a proper setup. You'll need to decide on a substrate. There are many different kinds and they all have their own pros and cons. Personally, I prefer aquatic soil, as it's perfectly safe for aquatic newts and it's beneficial for natural plant growth. And aquatic plants are equally important to the enclosure as well. And depending on the substrate also depends on the cost. But aside from cost, there are potential safety concerns depending on the substrate. Gravel, on top of not really having any benefit for the plants themselves, can actually be dangerous to your newt depending on the size. If it's small enough to fit in your newt's mouth, they could potentially swallow it, which would cause impaction and end up being fatal. Sand, in my opinion, would be a much better choice than gravel, but you may have to change up the type of plants that you choose to add to the enclosure based on that type of substrate. A bare bottom enclosure or no substrate is also acceptable. Now, with all that said and tying this into aquatic plants, we can look over here and what's being shown on screen now is the actual habitat that this newt comes from. It is always best to strive to set up an enclosure that closely resembles where these animals actually live or how they would live. And as shown here, that was the goal of my setup here, to replicate something as closely as possible to how they would live in the wild. And the reasoning here is pretty simple and straightforward. This is all to promote natural and healthy behavior of the newt that you're keeping. And with that said, there are certainly more budget-friendly ways of keeping these newts. A lack of substrate won't necessarily promote negative behavior, but aquatic plants themselves are pretty important for your newt's sense of security within the enclosure. Newts and salamanders love to hide, and so giving them this option to stay out of sight is pretty beneficial to their health. But not only do plants promote a sense of security for the newts, 
plants are actually beneficial to the enclosure as a whole since they provide natural chemical filtration. Now, of course, if you're going to be using plants for the enclosure, we need to talk about lighting. And thankfully, lighting is pretty straightforward since the newts themselves don't actually require any sort of special lighting. That means no UV bulbs and especially no heat lamps. The only sort of lighting that we really have to pay attention to is for the plants. LED lights are pretty straightforward and are beneficial to most plants, but you can go out of your way if you have the money to get lighting that has the spectrum that's already tailored to aquatic plants, such as the lighting shown here for my enclosure. Now I've got plenty of anacris and dwarf hair grass in here, along with some other warm water plants. Java moss is also another fantastic option for newts. And generally speaking, warmer temperature aquatic plants are pretty easy to come by in most pet stores. So it shouldn't be too difficult finding the right plants that you would want to use for your enclosure. Now, the only other important note about lighting, and it may go without saying, but you'll want to make sure you give your newts a proper day and night cycle. So just be sure to turn off the lights at night. And then a quick note about a land portion for this species. Like any other newt species, you should always dedicate a land portion for the newt to rest out of water if they choose to. And so I used a piece of spider wood that breaches the surface of the water. However, you're most likely never really gonna see these newts use it. And so you might ask, well then what's the point? On the off chance that they need to come out of the water, it should be available to them. And now that setting up the enclosure is out of the way, a fine point to put on all this is the temperature requirements. As mentioned earlier in the video, this species prefers things warmer than most newts or salamanders. And with the addition of warm water aquatic plants, maintaining temperatures between 70 to 76 degrees Fahrenheit will ensure both the blue tail fire belly newts and your plants are happy. All right, let's briefly talk about filters. This still directly ties into housing, but I want to highlight this as a separate section because filters are a pretty important point of discussion. And the simple answer as to whether or not blue tail fire belly newts require a filter is pretty simple. If you set up a natural enclosure the way that I have, you don't really need a filter system. As I stated, your plants should do most of that work for you. And if you go the route of natural filtration, water changes are still recommended. However, if you do choose to go with some sort of filtration, a key point to keep in mind is water current. And this also directly ties into how these animals live in the wild. These animals do not live in an area with strong water current. And so this is something you'll want to actively avoid as this could contribute to stress with your newt. Calm waters are the preference of the blue tail fire belly newt and this is also why my enclosure replicates this. So all this to say, if you're going to choose some sort of filtration system, make sure that the water current is not strong. In fact, I'd highly recommend using a sponge filter. This will get the job done without creating a strong water current. Okay, so at this point, your blue tail fire belly newt is at home in its enclosure. But at some point, you're going to have to feed your newt. And so this section will break down the best possible foods for your blue tail fire belly newt. And I'll just preface for a moment by saying, make sure to vary the diet of your newt to ensure it gets as many nutrients as it needs. One of the easiest food options to obtain is frozen bloodworms. These can be obtained at most pet stores, and newts will usually actively go for these. Another great option is frozen spirulina brine shrimp. Regular frozen brine shrimp is also available, but I want to specifically highlight spirulina frozen brine shrimp, because spirulina has the added benefit of enhancing color in newts, along with added nutrients. The only catch with both versions of frozen brine shrimp is that it may be rejected by your newts from time to time, perhaps due to the strong odor. 
It's also worth noting that frozen brine shrimp shouldn't be used too often due to the salt content. Both versions of the frozen brine shrimp are readily available at most pet stores. And then the final two mentions, live blackworms and earthworms. Even though these are different types of worms, I mention both because live worms are a newt and salamander's best friend. Live food usually piques the interest of any hungry newt or salamander, and both are extremely nutritious and overall the healthiest options you could provide your newt. So tank mates are always a huge point of discussion when it comes to newts and salamanders, and I want to preface this section by saying, whichever animal is added to the same enclosure as your newt or salamander, regardless of species, should always provide a benefit to the overall enclosure and to the newt. Because newts and salamanders are not community animals, they are hunters, they are predators. And as mentioned earlier in the video, all newts are poisonous. And so there are a lot of details to consider when adding a tank mate, regardless of the species, but in this case, the blue tail firebelly newt. So let's just take a quick look at what we don't want to add to the tank. First and foremost, fish. I've gotten plenty of pushback on certain videos and other people that have experiences with their newts and salamanders coexisting with fish just fine. And that may very well be the case, and if so, that's honestly great. However, due to how well documented mixing disasters are, the goal of this care guide is to ensure that your newt lives a long, healthy, stress-free life. And therefore, I cannot recommend anything that would pose a risk to the life of the newt. And so even with fish that are overall peaceful, you would still have to keep an eye out for your newts to see if they become stressed or not, or even if the fish potentially outcompete them for food. And so just to focus on fish here for a moment, since these are usually the animal that is brought up as a tank mate. But as we can see from this list of mixing disasters, fish are not the only animal we have to consider. And so let's move on to the animals that you are able to house with your newt safely. Animals that will provide an overall benefit to the enclosure and to the newt. And the first mention of a really great tank mate is cherry shrimp. Cherry shrimp are peaceful tank mates to your blue tail fire belly newt. And they provide the added benefit of cleaning up any leftover uneaten food as shown here and they overlap in temperature requirements with the blue tail firebelly newt. And due to this, the cherry shrimp readily breed quite often too. And if you're okay with losing a few shrimp here and there, they also make for a healthy snack for your newt if they happen to grab one. Which also emphasizes again the fact that these shrimp readily breed, you would have more shrimp again in no time. And then the last tank mate worth mentioning are snails. Snails make perfectly peaceful tank mates that add a benefit to the overall enclosure because they also help to clean up waste and algae. And so when paired with the cherry shrimp, the snails and shrimp are really helping to create a healthy ecosystem within the enclosure that will benefit the blue tail firebelly newt in the long run as well. The only catch with snails is that you would have to make sure that they are bigger than the size of your newt's head because just like gravel when swallowed, they could cause impaction, which could be fatal. In conclusion, it's actually pretty easy to pick out tank mates for newts and salamanders if you're aiming for animals that benefit the newt that you're keeping. I'll wrap up the care guide here. The blue tail firebelly newt, or also known as the cyan newt, is an incredible species. It possesses such eye-catching coloration, and it has a rich life history. Because this newt also requires temperatures that many households would have, this species is a really good pick when considering a newt that you would want to keep. And like other newts, 
This species is not shy about coming up to you when it wants food. They quickly get a grasp on who their owners are and where their food comes from. And so while newts and salamanders aren't the animal that you could really hold, they still interact with their owners. And while there are many different ways to set up an enclosure for this species, once the enclosure is set and established, keeping the blue tail firebelly newt is pretty straightforward. The aquatic plants that you would want to use for the species, along with the ease of picking out tank mates that would work well for this animal, keeping the blue tail firebelly newt is pretty straightforward and easy in my opinion. And so if cold temperatures are especially an issue for you, the blue tail firebelly newt would be the way to go. And that's the care guide everyone, I'll leave it there. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to leave a like, share, comment down below, please subscribe. Was this care guide helpful to you? Let me know what you think down below. Also, don't forget to check the description. I've left the links to all the sources that I've used and referenced. Be sure to check those out. And until next time everyone, stay curious and journey into the salamander wilds.